Hi, my name is Dr. Neil Shaw, and I'm one of the authors of a recently published article in Facial Plastic Surgery and Aesthetic Medicine. I like to thank my co-authors, um, authors Ashley Diaz and Dr. Samuel Auger. Um, the name of this paper is Imbrication of Anterior Digastric with Advancement of the Posterior Digastric and its Implication in Neck Aesthetics. So I think the best way to break this paper down to our um, listeners on this podcast is to first talk about neck aesthetics. Now, neck aesthetics in particular, there's really a lack of quantification. So we wanted to introduce another tool for surgeons to use that was easily accessible and easy for them to use in their own practices. And so this first measure we used was called the anterior to posterior digastric ratio. We first measured the distance from the mention to the cervical point. And with this distance, this loosely corresponds to the anterior digastric length. We compared that to the cervical point to the gonion, which corresponds to the posterior digastric length. What we found was that more aesthetically pleasing necks have a longer anterior to posterior digastric ratio. We also wanted to see if we could potentially lift up the neck. And so we were comparing the cervical point distance to the inferior edge of the mandible. Um, so these tools are what we're going to use to measure the technique. The technique we're talking about is advancement of the posterior digastric along the anterior digastric. So now that we've quantified what we wanted to do, which is kind of improve this ratio, um, now it's about the execution. So the way this technique works is essentially I do a submantle incision. Um, I'll do some superficial removal of fat. Uh, and then underneath the platysma muscle, I will remove deeper subplatysmal fat all the way down to the level of the digastric muscle and exposing the hyoid bone. And then I will imbricate the anterior digastric, which takes place with a 2 PDS needle. I start at the inferior aspect of the neck uh, near the hyoid, and I'll imbricate the lower portion of the anterior digastric muscle from right to left, um, from inferior to superior. Um, if you're looking for the way this is done, this is also shown in an illustration um, in the article itself. Once I've imbricated this muscle from inferior to superior, I will go back with the same running suture from superior to inferior. At this point, um, with this muscle brought together, I'll grab some of the posterior digastric muscle and advance it to the anterior digastric muscle. The goal uh, with this technique was to see if we could make the anterior digastric muscle longer, as well as lift up the neck. When we look at our data, we saw that we could see improvements in this technique versus just um, removing deep fat uh, by itself. Um, in our uh, data, we found that the anterior to posterior digastric ratio improved an average of 26.5% of the new group versus 15.9% in the control group. We also found that the inferior edge of the manageable decreased an average of 13.9% using the new technique. Some pointers. Um, if you're going to use this technique with your patients, you might want to warn them that uh, their neck is going to feel tight and fairly tight for the first few days. And it's a different kind of tightness than using a wrap. Um, patients do seem to get adjusted to this after a few days. Um, some benefits of this technique is if you're removing deeper fat, um, sometimes there can be a central concavity in the middle of the neck, oftentimes called the cobra neck. The benefit of putting the digastric in the midline is it can fill this void as well as recruit some of the lateral tissues, including the submandibular glands, into this more central area uh, where you're trying to create some fullness. Overall, our complications with this technique were limited um, compared to the new technique, and the amount of operative time it added was limited as well. So our goal with this paper was to introduce this new technique, introduce some new analytical tools for surgeons, and hope that um, other surgeons can use these tools to help improve their own practice. I'd like to thank the editorial board for allowing me to present and submit this paper, and I really hope that uh, the authors and listeners uh, gain something of value with this paper. Thanks so much.